Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ, and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren which are with me, uh, unto the churches of Galatia. This is written to Christians. Grace be to you, and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, uh, for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I speak or seek to please men, for if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, this is Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ speaking, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many, my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God to separate me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his Son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was known by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorified God in me. Galatians chapter 2, Then fourteen years after I went up again to Jerusalem uh, with Barnabas, this is the apostle, one of the apostles called Paul, uh, with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which uh, were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privately or privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me, God accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conf uh, conference added nothing to me. But contrarywise, uh, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, 
they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision, or to the Jews. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do, were forward to do. But when Peter was come to Antioch, Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that sin came uh, from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew him and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. So he feared the Jews. And the other Jews uh, dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. And when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who uh, are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. In other words, contrary to what many people think, they think that if we do put enough good works that God will uh, receive us into heaven. It doesn't work that way. The Lord Jesus Christ had to be crucified upon the cross for you and for me. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. Lord, is your soul saved? If you were to die right now, where would you be? Heaven through faith in Jesus Christ. Or down in hell because you've rejected or neglected the Lord Jesus Christ who today can be your Saviour. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We're not saved by works of any shape, race, shape or form. We're saved through faith in Jesus Christ alone. Repentance toward God, that is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I keep on saying, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you prepared to do that? Are you prepared to get right with God as a result of faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ? Verse 17 of uh, Galatians 2, But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we as all ourselves also are found sinners. Is that therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. If I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. This is, these are the words of a Christian. But Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. What he's saying is this, if we can be good enough and, and do good deeds uh, by the law, the laws of God, obeying those laws, then Christ wasted his time coming and being crucified upon the cross. But since that isn't the case, and we're only saved through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to forget about the law. You see, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be saved through faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ. We cannot be saved by doing good works, by doing good things, by keeping the commandments of the Lord. Now it's good to do that, but it won't get us to heaven. You and I need to understand we're sinners in the sight of God. We need God's salvation, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You see, the only way we can be saved is through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, and that precious blood that was shed upon the cross 
is the only way that you and I can have forgiveness for our sins. There's no other way. In Him we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Galatians chapter 3, O foolish Galatians who have bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Remember, this is written to Christians. This only would I learn of you, received ye the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth uh, to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. See, Abraham put his faith in God. And that's how we were saved. The same way that you and I are, are saved, we've got to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The, the salvation of God is preached unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we must believe on him to become a child of God. We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Without the new birth, without being born again, we'll never ever be in heaven. There'll never ever be anyone in heaven without faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. And uh, then, so then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth upon a tree. Sorry, hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might be receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man is another, nor ever be two. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not and his seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. And this I say that the covenant which that was confirmed before before of God in Christ the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Therefore then serveth the law was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. If there had been a law uh, uh, given which could have given life, verily or truly righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture has concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterward be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of 
you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Neither is there Jew nor Greek or Gentile, neither is there bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Galatians chapter 4 Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, and again this is speaking to Christians, because ye are sons, God has sent forth his, the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Howbeit then, when ye knew not God, Ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Ye observe days and months and times and years. I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labour in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation which was in my flesh, ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Where, there, where is then the blessedness ye spake of? For I bear you record, that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you, that ye might affect them. But it is good to be zealously affected always in, in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you, my little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondman, a bondmaid, and the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory or a picture story uh, for the, these are the two covenants. The one from the Mount Sinai which gendereth the bondage, which is Agar. But this Agar is Mount Sinai of Ara in Arabia. And answereth to Jerusalem which now is and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice thou, barren, that bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that travaileth not, for the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. That is then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted uh, him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture, cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Galatians chapter 6, verse 5. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And again, this is actually written to Christians. 
Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For, though, for we, through the Spirit, wait for the promise of righteousness by faith, for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did what will, who did hinder you, that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord, that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offence of the cross ceased. For I would they were even cut off which troubled you. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfil the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, murderings, and such like of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If ye, we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not, not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Galatians chapter 6. And again, this is written to Christians. Brethren, if, any, if a man uh, be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye not, uh, one another's burdens, and so fulfil the law of Christ. If any man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the, his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. You see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory, save or accept in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the 
It's not worth it. God has made the way of escape through His Son, Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross. Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. He was buried, but praise God, the third day He rose again, according to the Scriptures. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you, and thanks for listening.